Good morning. I got up really early this morning so that I could create the, the safest environment possible for you and I to have an intimate conversation about what I'm now calling enemy number one, self-sabotaging internal dialogue. There are a lot of things out there that can cause challenges for people, but the most dangerous, most destructive, because it robs you and everyone else around you of all your greatest talents, the dialogue we have inside ourselves about ourselves. I remember the first time this thought came. If I said half the things to you that these habits of thinking are saying to you, could we still be friends? In scroll number two, Og Mandino, he wrote the 10 scrolls and the greatest salesman in the world. In scroll number two, I'll greet this day with love in my heart. We're often focused on this is the greatest secret of success in all ventures. A muscle can split a shield and even destroy life, but only the unseen power of love can open the heart of man until I master this art, I'm no more than a peddler in the marketplace. I'll make love my greatest weapon, and none on whom I call can defend against this force. But toward the end of the scroll, we often miss a really key paragraph. May I read it to you? Og writes, and most of all, I will love myself. For when I do, I will zealously inspect all things, all things which enter my body, my mind, my soul, and my heart. Never will I overindulge the requests of the flesh. Rather, I will cherish my body with cleanliness and moderation. Never will I allow my mind to be attracted to evil and despair. Rather, I will lift it up with knowledge and wisdom of the ages. Never will I allow my soul to become complacent and satisfied. Rather, I will feed it with meditation and prayer. Never will I allow my heart to become small and bitter. Rather, I will share it and it will grow and warm the earth. I will greet this day with love in my heart. I don't know your beliefs, but I want you to know I come to you very prayerfully this morning, wanting to be guided in what I share with you regarding this issue of self-sabotaging internal dialogue. What might it sound like? I think that's where we want to start. I remember one day standing in front of the mirror, I was getting ready, and something had happened, and it didn't turn out very well, and I was still lamenting it, and I looked in the mirror and I said, David, you are so stupid. And for the first time, I heard myself say that. And when I heard it, what I knew, is that I had said that for decades, subconsciously, unaware. And those words had chiseled at my soul for a very long time. The very first thing we're going to want to do is hear some of this dialogue, to start to become aware of it when it occurs. I want to share with you a little bit about what creates it, and a couple of ideas of how you could start to quiet it. Because until we do, we're going to live in this cocoon inside our world, sometimes being shy, sometimes being outgoing to try to hide from it, but nevertheless burdened by it. You see, the most selfish thing we can do the most selfish thing we could do is to allow this dialogue to continue. Because many of you have very high levels of empathy and intuition. You get inspired ideas all the time. But this dialogue 
will talk you out of your own inspiration. Having you question your worth or your worthiness. How could you receive this? Who do I think I am? Questions about your ability, skills, education, uh, physicality. Maybe it's your weight. Uh, maybe it's your appearance uh, that you have some deprecating dialogue about that, sabotaging dialogue. It might be in the area of character, where we're questioning our ability to make a commitment and keep it, because we keep making it and breaking it. Whether it's dealing with our health, or whether it's dealing with a, our children, or a, a companion, whatever it might be. There's a lot of dialogue around when I have an idea and I feel strongly about it. I know I'm right and somebody else feels strongly about their idea. <sighs> and to keep the peace, can you feel the energy? <sighs> I have to yield by cutting off my arm or I might get defensive <laughs> and fight back and in turn crush their esteem. There's a lot of dialogue going on around contribution this belief in this thought process that I have to sacrifice my time, my energy, and even my well-being to serve everyone else because I have to, I need to, I should. What would they think of me if I didn't? To prove that I'm okay. And then some have dialogue around past mistakes. Mistakes that when life starts to get difficult or challenging, we might look back at those mistakes as the reason for why this is happening now. I can't get ahead, it's not happening fast enough. I'm not getting the breaks everybody else is getting. Well, my, it might be the break, everyone else. <laughs> get my grammar correct. Yeah, I'm looking back at that as my reason. See if you can hear some of this dialogue when you're getting ready to make a phone call and it's all about they don't want to be bothered by a salesperson or what do I really have to offer? Or, I don't know how to talk to them. I had a client recently struggling with this dialogue. I said, and she was in a business where she wanted to present what she does to other people to help them become healthy. And I said, what I want you to do over the course of the next week is really pay attention to your intuition. And before this thought process can talk you out of writing their name down on a piece of paper, write it down. They come to your heart, to your mind, to your heart. Just write them down. I'm not telling you to go sell them, talk to them. Just write them down. See who comes to your heart. At the end of the week, she had 36 names. Next instruction. Call one of them and simply say, I'm working with a coach who's helping me to embrace my intuition. He asked me to write down the names of everyone who comes to my heart over the course of a week he challenged me to find 25, I found 36. And your name is number four on that list. Why are you on my heart? I said, bite your tongue, don't say a word. The next one comes from them. Give them the safest place. Pour your energy into this moment. And the person responded. Because I'm desperate. The later in the conversation, this person mentioned she had been impressed to call my client for the last three months. Didn't quite know how. You have enormous gifts to get these inspired ideas and to act on them, to prove their validity to create things you wouldn't have created otherwise, to bless other people's lives. And when you get this inspired idea and you act on it, 
I can be so bold. You know and are known. You trust and are trusted. Now, what you're doing has to be worthy of this, but if it is, and if it is, and you receive that knowingness that you're connected to humanity, you get an inspired idea, you act on it nine out of ten times, it turns out to be an inspired idea, an intuitive impression, a creative solution, sometimes beyond yourself. And that knowingness, that knowingness is the greatest healer of this habit. We're replacing this knowingness with this self-sabotaging dialogue. Pretty soon you're going, that's not true. That's not me. This is me. I'm the one who cares about people. I'm the one who receives inspired ideas. I'm the one who acts on them with courage and speaks what I am inspired to say. And I create things I would not have had otherwise. That's who I am. I am unique. I am priceless. Not because of varying beliefs. I'm just going to share it with you. This is my belief. Great commandment. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, might, mind, and strength. Hmm. Whatever your greatest power is, get connected. <laughs> Love thy neighbor, second commandment. Like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. Which means we can only love a neighbor to the extent we can love ourselves. This isn't about being self-centric. This isn't about just serving me. This is about me being so okay, I'm totally available to serve. Let's talk just for a moment about the things that create challenges create some of this sabotaging dialogue. These are the other five enemies. And then there is another one, enemy two through six, and then there's a seventh kind of overarching one. But enemy number two, enemy number two. <laughs> Entrepreneurial independent minds see possibilities. We see them so vividly that our mind gets attached to them. We call it a mental construct. It's a new reality in our mind. And when life shows up differently, there's an autonomic, which is more than an automatic response. <sighs> Sympathetic nervous system releases cortisol. When we're in this thought process, the, the, it's releasing norepinephrine, which is euphoric. And all of a sudden, we're getting uh, this cortisol. And even worse, the amygdala, our fight or flight center, the limbic brain, starts sending out fear dendrites. And they, they shut down the energy rich parts of our brain to centralize everything in fight or flight. That's right here, our prefrontal cortex, highest levels of consciousness, empathy, practical judgments, common sense. We are holding our life hostage to our expectations. We're hating our life because it's not happening fast enough. Soon enough. It's not what we want. And then we turn inward. And I've heard this so many times. I remember the first time I heard an adult man say this to me with tears. David, I can almost touch it. I can almost taste it. Why can't I have it? What's wrong with me? Does God not love me? I was so excited to share with him that he was using his greatest gift to engage in fantasy and catastrophe. The very gift he could use to get inspired ideas, intuitive impressions, and creative solutions. He wanted to visualize himself into success versus getting inspired ideas that ignite his passion and drive his focus, discipline, effort, and action. The number one cause of this self-sabotaging internal dialogue is the direct result of a dangerous way of using your greatest strength to create unrealistic expectations, hold life hostage to it. That one's driven by enemy three. 
desire for ease, my stress. We look at those two enemies and we combine them and we have one of the most devastating enemies to our worth as a human being. Now there's another one, second most common, comes from another enemy when we get into the comparison game. And we compare our very worst against someone's apparent strength. Entrepreneurs have a tendency in empathy and intuition to have one measurement out of balance. And it's a measurement where they focus a little too much on outward appearance. Causes one of two things. If I am questioning my own talents, skills, economics, and somebody else looks wildly successful, I'm most likely going to feel intimidated, uncomfortable. But when I'm in that space, I'm not hearing intuition. I'm not stepping into that person's world. I'm not creating connection. I'm in my shell talking to myself about my own inadequacies. The other risk is I could create an expectation for how that person will perform based on how they look, only to be sadly disappointed when they show up differently. Comparison is the number two cause of this self-sabotaging dialogue. Number three, and some might think this should be one, but it's actually number three in frequency, traumatic events. Now, traumatic events are generally Things like child abuse that occurred as a child, an abusive relationship as an adult, uh, bankruptcy, a loss of a business, uh, those kinds of things that are just so traumatic. They don't necessarily need to be that traumatic. It could be one of your school teachers said something when you were very young and it just traumatized you. It just creates a loss of hope. That particular cause often requires therapeutic intervention and not coaching. Coaching is when someone becomes aware and wants to move forward. Therapy is when someone's struggling with a challenge and needs to sort through it and process through it and work through it. That's therapeutic. And sometimes we need a therapeutic solution to trauma. The fourth one is secrets. Yeah, secrets. Now, these are generally pretty serious secrets. It's, uh, if I'm an alcoholic and I don't want someone to know that I drink secretly, privately, or I try to hide it from people. It might be a pornography addiction. And I'm in a relationship and I'm trying to hide it so my companion doesn't see it because I don't want them to feel less about themselves and I can't seem to get over it. And I, wouldn't want the, I wouldn't want this shouted from the rooftop. Did you know there's more money spent on internet pornography than all other forms of entertainment combined? Somebody somewhere is keeping track of where we go on the internet. And I don't doubt that someday someone's gonna shout it from a rooftop. That's a secret we may not wanna have. Another could be we're abusive in terms of children or a spouse. Now, this isn't we yelled at our kids once because we all run out of patience. We're human. This is something far more serious. This is an anger issue that's out of control. It could be an eating disorder. Now, I've mentioned several negative habits. And then there's one that's not a habit. It's, it's, it's a condition. It's a medical condition. It's called depression. And many people struggle with depression, but they don't want anybody to know that. They're ashamed of their depression. Isn't it tragic we live in a society where we have to have that as a secret? Well, if there's therapeutic intervention that's needed for your secret, or medication that's needed for your secret, you want to become whole and healthy. I've had people say, well, here I am. I've got this facade I present to the world, and then there's this despicable me, this person who drinks in the closet, if you will. Which one am I? I said, well, you're not really faking this. 
you're choosing to be aware. You're showing up, being your best self, the best version of yourself. You're probably closer to this, the real you. This is just a habit, destructive one. It's just a habit. It's destroying your worth. If you've got a habit like that, seek assistance. Get this out of your life so that you can be free. The fifth cause of this self-sabotaging dialogue, I find with like professional athletes, with high-level executives, with really driven people, the doer, 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 doer. And we all want to do. Doing is a great thing. But doing and doing and doing at the expense of being. These doers have a hard time just being quiet, being still, being with themselves. They're not on their own radar. Their worth is determined based on what they do and not who they are, which is unique and priceless beyond value. So consider these possibilities. See if you can hear some of this dialogue today. If you want some assistance, I wrote a book called Today I Begin a New Life, which walks through the three ways to help fight this, connecting with people, by using your mind constructively to get these inspired ideas, and then staying present in the now. And being present in the now is one of the great ways of embracing our true self. Have you ever procrastinated? You, know, you put something off, then when you finally can't wait any longer, you jump in and you do it and you go, wow, that wasn't so hard. Of course it wasn't. You brought your natural genius to the moment. And the more time you spend with your natural genius, the more your esteem heals. So the book was about how to, to improve this, but it wasn't about the topic itself. The book was released in January. In September, I had the strong impression that we needed a book just on this self-sabotaging internal dialogue. And I called it the observer's chair. It's a little read. It's only 120 pages long, uh, the observer's chair. In the observer's chair, there's an exercise where I give you a lot of examples of destructive dialogue, this sabotaging dialogue. And the exercise says at the end of that, we say, that's not me. That's not like me. Then you read an affirmation, I am unique and priceless. That's like me. That's me. And start to exercise hearing the negative dialogue, consciously replacing it with positive dialogue, while you're learning the skills of connecting with people, getting inspired ideas and acting on them, and staying present in the now. Well, a couple hours of sun's gonna come up. It will do that every morning for all of us. The question is always going to be, how are we going to show up in the world today? Are we gonna stay in our cocoon? Are we going to let this self-sabotaging dialogue restrict us from showing up, rob us from hearing intuitive impressions, rob others from this natural gifting that we have, our natural genius showing up? Because the objective is to be real. Root word is relationship. To be genuine. Root word genus, which is genius to bring our natural genius fully to the service of another person. That's not ego. That's being fully available. And to be authentic, anthosectic, our true self, our real self. Not our habits of thinking. That's not who we are. We might identify with those, those words every once in a while. But that's not who we are. We are magnificent and priceless and capable. Being authentic without the need to impress or pretend or feel ashamed or fear. That's what we do from in here. We try to impress to feel better. We pretend to feel better. We feel shame and feel awful. We feel fear and feel awful without the need to do that. This is the most difficult task in our mortal existence, quoting Robert Hartman, Dr. Hartman, who did the math for our assessment. The most difficult task in our mortal existence, and then he punctuated with this, 
and the highest level of maturity. Yes, the highest level of maturity is to break out of the shell, show up in the service of others, getting inspired ideas, igniting passion, taking action, and staying in creation. That's the highest level of maturity. May we today begin a new life. May we shed this old skin, which hath too long suffered the bruises of failure and the wounds of mediocrity. May we be born anew. And may our birthplace be a vineyard where there is fruit for all. Where can you start? Well, we've got a brand new version of the assessment. We are so excited about this. We've been working on it for over a year. It's called Habit Finder. It's helping you find these habits of thinking, which ones are supporting you and which ones are sabotaging you, self-sabotaging internal dialogue. Now you can know. Go to habitfinder.com, habitfinder.com, and take this assessment. And when you get done, if you've got questions, there's a link you can click on and spend a little time with one of our coaches. Our business is your success. That's what we're all about. That's our mission, to bless your life. Let us do it. Take the action. Take the new assessment. And start by raising your awareness about this dialogue. So you'll have a purpose for shifting it because of the world. The world is waiting for you.